Hi friends, uh, today we have uh, Dr. Balaji Duraiswami sir uh, who is working as uh, Associate Consultant uh, Comprehensive Center of King Fahad Medical Center as a Radiation Oncologist and uh, today sir is here at the studios uh, to give you some insights about the field of radiotherapy. Uh, as an introduction sir, did his MBBS from Kilpock Medical College and uh, went on to do uh, MD Radiotherapy in the Madras Medical College uh, which is known as the Bernard Institute of Radiology and uh, Oncology. And after finishing his MD, uh, sir did his SR ship from Tata Memorial Hospital, Mumbai and went on to do his fellowship in uh, palliative medicine from the same institute and now sir is working as a radiation oncologist. So welcome sir to the studios of ADR Plexus and uh, we uh, want you to share the insights about uh, the field radiotherapy to our PG aspirants. Uh, to start. Why did you choose the MD or radiotherapy after your MBBS? Thanks, Arun. Uh, thank you for bringing me in. Um, MD uh, radiotherapy I joined in 2005 uh, in Madras Medical College. Uh, in uh, 2005, uh, MD radiotherapy was not a very sought after uh, post graduation. Um, truth be told, uh, I, I, I did not fare so well in the other uh, the, in the entrance exams. But uh, honestly, I was not looking for forward to go into the traditional uh, specialties that people usually tend to take, uh, even now, uh, even uh, general medicine or pediatrics or general surgery. Uh, somehow, I always wanted to uh, get out of the crowd and choose something new uh, where I could make a mark for myself and by myself. So. Uh, radiation oncology was uh, one such field. Uh, it was very interesting. It is oncology. Cancer incidence was on the rise. Uh, many people around me, my own friends, family members, uh, I had seen suffering from cancer. Uh, and how uh, important oncology as a service and clinical practice is. And that kind of uh, encouraged me to take it as a specialty. And the prospects uh, were very promising even in 2005, which is much more now. Sir, uh, it would be great if you can uh, guide the PG aspirants in choosing colleges for uh, MD radiotherapy courses? Yeah, so uh, uh, radiation oncology is a very uh, technology uh, dependent and oriented kind of uh, specialty. Uh, so um, if, I, if I, was, I was to choose between two centers uh, which were offering MD radiotherapy, then I would choose a center which has the latest in uh, radiation oncology. Of course, uh, as a resident, uh, as a MDPG, um, teaching is also, uh, so wherever teaching is uh, good, where they have a structured uh, training program, a, a teaching uh, schedule. So uh, it's good to uh, go visit colleges and centers and see what they have and talk to the postgraduates who are there already. Uh, and if you have friends, please talk to them before taking or choosing. Uh, don't just choose because uh, I am from Chennai, so I will uh, take it from Madras Medical College. No, if you have an option, and if you can, and if your rank is good, and you can take uh, other institutes uh, elsewhere, uh, please compare the technology and the teaching uh, program and the staff that is there, of course. Sir, can you list the best colleges for uh, radiotherapy in India? Uh, it would be unfair to say something is best and something is not so good. Uh, so as I said, uh, some of the central institutes, they are uh, up to date. Uh, they have the latest in technology, um, let's say Tata Memorial Hospital, for example. Uh, so there are centers, but uh, again, uh, come, I, I studied from Madras Medical College from the Barnard Institute of uh, Radiology and uh, Oncology. Uh, and uh, I did not feel any uh, lesser. Okay, so it's, uh, technology can always be acquired. That's what I wanted to uh, impress upon. Uh, your basics, your fundamentals are more important. Technology can also be acquired after your uh, post-graduation. Uh, it's a skill and it's always changing. What is uh, in today, it's like updating your software. It is like getting a new phone. So technology can always, uh, you can always update your uh, knowledge on technology. It's just a skill that has to be acquired. You don't have to be worried about that. Thank you, sir, for the insights. Uh, sir, uh, how should a young postgraduate uh, proceed after taking MD radiotherapy? Uh, so, I, I'm not sure about the other specialties, and, and I think it's uh, the same. Uh, but in radiation oncology, what I uh, saw 
uh, when I was doing my three years in M uh, in uh, MMC, the there is a lot of stress and importance given to research. A lot of stress and importance because it's new. Uh, evidence is uh, evidence gathering, evidence building, evidence generation. These are things that you will uh, kind of uh, hear for. Uh, at least for me, it was the first time that I was. So I'm doing something new. Uh, so that that kind of gave me the uh, encouragement, and I'm sure uh, people who take MD radiation oncology will also realize that uh, they have to be up to date with uh, research, with uh, statistics, with um, uh, attending conferences, presenting papers. Publications are very important. Um, critiquing uh, journals. So these are things that, uh, as a JR, as a or as an MD PG you have to be well versed with and look forward to doing all these things apart from clinical work of course and sir uh, this is one of the most frequently asked questions to us does radiotherapist have a radiation exposure uh, no i mean this was uh, was it a concern for me uh, before taking the course yes it was a concern for me but uh, like all uh, things half knowledge they say kills so because we don't know we think it is bad okay uh, so there is no direct exposure to radiation for any radiation oncologist or a technologist for that matter even the person who delivers the radiation is not directly exposed to radiation leave alone the doctor the doctor usually stays in the treatment uh, uh, planning room or in the, in the in the planning station as we call it uh, it is all uh, uh, robotic these days nobody does manual uh, work so uh, the exposure to radiation is very minimal it's a myth uh, it is uh, equal to any other normal uh, person uh, living in the society. Um, uh, I am not sure if I am right or wrong, but a frequent uh, a flyer like a pilot or, or an astronaut who goes to the space is probably exposed to more radiation than a radiation oncologist himself. Uh, there is a myth which is also spreading among uh, female doctors should avoid uh, taking radiotherapy courses? Absolutely the same answer uh, because there is no radiation exposure. Uh, if it is accidental, it is accidental radiation exposure. So uh, if it is going to be an accidental radi uh, radiation exposure, uh, everyone in a, in a specific radius will be affected. It is not just one person who is going to be affected. Um, there is uh, strict regulations and monitoring. We are given uh, radiation monitoring uh, badges, TLD badges, which are uh, to be sent to the Central Institute. Uh, and monitored. Uh, so, um, radiation exposure, and if it's uh, beyond a certain point, then people are taken to task, and this never happened. Uh, so, there is no risk for ladies uh, if you're talking about, you know, fertility issues or something like that. It's absolutely uh, mythical to think that radiation oncologists, uh, I mean, females, should not take up the speciality. Sir, uh, you also mentioned about robotics in radiotherapy. Uh, can you share us some insights about uh, new advancements in uh, radiotherapy? So, uh, radiation therapy is um, um, computer-aided um, delivery of radiation. So, uh, to, to be very, very um, like uh, simplistic uh, in, in the explanation, uh, radiation uh, now is very advanced uh, that we can kind of um, define the area where radiation and how much of radiation has to reach a specific uh, target. Uh, so, uh, so, so this highly targeted, precise radiation, and this is impossible without uh, robotics and uh, automation and uh, uh, computer. Uh, you know, with, with, without an aid of a computer or supercomputer, I should say. Uh, this is where radiation oncology stands at this stage. Uh, latest advances, you must have all uh, heard about the particle beam radiation, proton therapy being installed. There are very few centers in the world. Proudly, one of our centers uh, is in South India. So, um, proton therapy is, is one of the latest advancements. Uh, cyber knife, again, when it came uh, a few years ago, cyber knife also was a uh, latest technology at that time, and uh, India was one of the first uh, few places to, to have it uh, installed. So a lot of scope for the latest, uh, and anyone who is uh, techno frenzy, you know, anyone who likes uh, physics, mathematics, computers, automation, robotics, uh, mechanics, you will be thrilled to take this specialty. Anyone who has 
uh, a fascination for technology because this is technology put to use at its best for the good of the patients. Does uh, radiation oncologist have to depend completely on hospital? Unfortunately, I would say yes and no because uh, the, um, uh, the machines are expensive, so we cannot have our own machines. So machines are very resource intense, so big hospitals will have, it, have them installed. The technology is new again. So you have to be attached to a hospital to successfully practice uh, as a radiation oncologist. Having said that, you can have your own clinic, you can also see patients. You could do preventive oncology, you could do rehabilitation, you could do palliative care, you could do a lot of things um, after, um, I mean, you know, in, just outside the hospital. I mean, you can have your own clinic. It's just like uh, 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 most of the screening work, most of the history taking, examination happens outside the hospital. Inside the hospital is usually treatment planning and delivery. So, uh, yeah. So without the hospital, yes, it's a, it's a little bit of a challenge uh, to practice radiation oncology successfully. Thank you, sir, for the insights. What is the scope of uh, clinical practice as a radiotherapist? Huge. Uh, like we said, um, radi uh, cancer in incidence is increasing. And the role of radiation is getting more and more uh, significant. Uh, and because we are able to safely deliver very high doses of radiation precisely without much of side effects and with the introduction of all these particle beams. Uh, so the, the scope is huge. What's going to happen in the future is anybody's guess and it's changing very fast. Uh, so we don't have to wait for another five or ten years. It could probably be in the next couple of years that things will change and uh, you might have to update yourself but uh, the scope is huge. There are many patients uh, especially in the Southeast Asia region, uh, specifically in uh, uh, India, we have a lot of patients uh, who need radiation oncologists and, and centers. Still, the number of radiation oncologists in India is not enough. What is the usual carrier graph for a radiotherapist? Uh, like, what is the usual starting pay scale uh, for a young uh, radiotherapist to begin with? And uh, how does the carrier ladder grow for a radiotherapist? Mm. Like any other specialty, like uh, like what uh, uh, fresh pass out from any other specialty, internal medicine, or probably not like uh, a radiologist. I, I don't know what the pay scale is, but in any case, for radiation oncology um, from a good center, you should be able to start off with a seventy or a sixty thousand or a seventy thousand, uh, like like any other uh, postgraduate. Uh, but with experience, uh, if you if you have uh, if you're uh, if you've done uh, um, if you've been an SR, senior re registrar or some, somewhere, or you've gone for training outside, if you've uh, honed your skills, if, uh, if you've acquired more skills, uh, then any, any uh, big player in the market will be ready to grab you uh, the next moment. Uh, they know that you are good, and they will be uh, able to retain you with a very fair compensation. Thank you, sir. After finishing your MD radiotherapy from uh, Madras Medical College, you went on to do a two-year SR ship in Tata Memorial Hospital and a fellowship in Palliative Medicine. Uh, can you just guide us, like, what next after doing MD radiotherapy? So, uh, like we started off, uh, I was thinking about rare fields. I was thinking about fields where I could make a mark, where I could make a difference. So, uh, in my uh, search for fields like that, and also because I have the act, I had, I think. Uh, the aptitude uh, for suffering patients, for relieving pain at that time, I was very much interested in palliative medicine. So this is one of the things that I, I want to tell uh, PG aspirants, that uh, radiation oncology, and oncology as in, in general as a field, uh, might not be very gratifying to you if you're looking for quick results or you know a, a quick turnover, always. So sometimes uh, it's... Um, uh, it's how, how much we're able to help the patient that really matters. Uh, and uh, the tumor might not be responsive. Uh, the responses might not be very encouraging at, that, uh, at times. So this is something that uh, you have to keep in your mind. Uh, and to check and see if you have the aptitude uh, to deal with uh, such kind of situations. Uh, there are some other specialties which, you know, when I was taking uh, MD radiation oncology in 2005, they told me psychiatry is one such field. Uh, where your patient is always a patient. I mean, you really don't uh, get well or well enough sometimes. Uh, so 
just to draw a parallel, uh, things have changed in psychiatry, of course. But anyways, coming to the point, uh, after radiation oncology, what radiation oncology opens you uh, up uh, to do DM in medical oncology. Uh, you could do uh, specialization, sub-specializations um, as a hematologist or a, a palliative medicine uh, specialists. Uh, so I, for one, because I was interested in palliative medicine, I chose to do a fellowship, a two years fellowship in uh, palliative medicine. Um, uh, talking about uh, senior registrarships, again, uh, depends on where you did your training. Uh, but irrespective of that, I would recommend any, everybody, you know, to do uh, a senior registrar uh, training uh, after completing a structured uh, MD uh, post-graduation in any field, more specifically in radiation oncology. So what would you like to tell the future radiotherapist from India? Uh, radiation oncologists, uh, um, we are very proud to call ourselves radiation oncologists. Uh, it n it, it uh, was not so a few years ago. Even when I was taking it, people tried to discourage me from taking it as a specialty. Uh, your own family, friends, well-meaning, with good intentions, they used to say that. Uh, but uh, what I did find is that it's a very exciting, um, very rewarding, uh, financially very rewarding, clinically very rewarding um, specialty, uh, something new. Um, there are very few radiation oncologists in my batch, and uh, and 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 it's uh, it always feels good to be special. So if you want to feel special, if you want to uh, stand out of the crowd, if you want to look at other prospects and what uh, life has, uh, oncology uh, in general is a very uh, exciting uh, field to be in. And radiation oncology, if you are interested in technology, uh, research robotics, um, physics, just basic physics, radiation oncology is the field to be in. Thank you so much, sir, for the fantastic interview. Thank you so much.